Um, uh, yeah, no, I'm going to thank Anne very much for that uh, extremely um, uh, sort of important lesson in how we can actually <laughs> begin using Dilla's this and Gotari from sort of a forgetting in a way of, of what we think we know and how we can apply certain concepts. Um, I think one of the things that I would like to address to Anne, um, but I hope it sort of turns, emerges in the questions, is the idea of um, this idea of the machinic uh, art as a machine as a sort of vector for criticizing a kind of history of the autonomy of art in its forms, um, and the kind of place of that, and with respect to what social art histories have produced, you know, people like uh, Michael Baxendahl and the, the period I and, and these sort of things, because I know, I mean, I'm, I'm quite sure that <laughs> what you're articulating in terms of the notion of this kind of a constructive experience of of a particular social assemblage is quite different from this uh, very easy idea of a period I where we have the quite confirmed notion, interpretation of an Ike's altarpiece as a machine. So put your eye to, uh, not I, not I, I mean not only I, don't be so scopocentric. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, all right. <laughs> um, machinism as opposed to a period I. <laughs> but of course the period I was all the senses together as far as someone like Baxendale was. So, anyway, it's, it's something to, to think about. Right. But I think this is one of the really interesting sort of vectors of what you're saying, you, you know, critically with respect to the whole art history and the social history of art and that disciplining of the social. And I think that's something that... Uh, I'd like to hear you more, talk about more with respect to tra the transcendental empiricism. Shall I yeah. yeah. <clears throat> well, well, of course, there has been a lot of uh, very beautiful work on sociology of art. Um, and I do read them, and I do appreciate them. But then it's only part of the question, right? So you have to put it together. So, uh, in fact, in my... Uh, um, I didn't uh, strongly differentiate here in my talk visual art and music. One of my purposes was uh, talking about VJs, Deleuze and Guattari's VJs. Right? <laughs> One of my purposes was <clears throat> to say this is very, I mean, usual. I, it's a really common thought today. There is no distinction whatsoever between visual and uh, sound. That nearly every video artist is together becoming musician when coming from the visual art, or musicians become interested in some kind of visual representation, uh, representation as a presentation of uh, either um, music or uh, as a, part, a new kind of writing. So, I mean, and it's not something that has only. Um, uh, taking place today. In fact, it's because we have categories in our minds that are too uh, simple. Uh, and these categories have to be taken as a, a transformatory, um, transformatory membranes. So even in the past, this was the case uh, also. I'm always, do you know that I'm fond of... Uh, Deleuze and Guattari, but I'm always very much uh, annoyed by the fact that most of the people who are dealing with Deleuze and Guattari in art are terribly, terribly binary. They come up with molar distinctions. So this is good because it's imminence and nobody knows how to define imminence, right? Because imminence is not something. Because if you say that imminence is something, so you are platonistic. And you believe that there is, you know, two-floor building, first floor everybody, second floor eminence, where only the philosopher can go. No? And so in the second floor you have some bright artists, the eminence guys, and then everybody else is doing transcendent. I mean, this is so annoying, right? 
because it's a way to understand Deleuze's and Guattari's uh, proposition of new type of formalization as the same eternal boring distinction between good and evil. And so you have the good immanence, and so this is really something terrible. Sorry. <laughs> so in, in order to avoid this, I mean, it's really a huge, a huge, a huge issue today for people who are fond in Deleuze and Guattari stuff, to avoid this incredibly horrible reactionary way to cut in two and, and, to, and, to, and to take imminence as a kind of reservoir of ontology. So this is the reason why I say no ontology, no. I say, well, in English it's very easy to put it. Not one ontology, no, a becomeology, right? Becomeology. So formalism as transformation. And this is something else. So no big ontology of imminence. A becomeology that allows us to consider that Johann Sebastian Bach, of course he's interesting, I mean, as John Cage. Not for the same reasons. Okay. Sorry. I think we can probably take some questions now, two minutes. Yes. Okay. I would like to have thought there are a million things you could talk about in response to what you said. I would like to have thought it from the direction of Godard, who is not necessarily a stranger to many of his ideas. And to the last statement, I think you have uh, said in response to uh, the, uh, the mediator uh, that there is no difference between the visual and yeah. the... Well, there may be a difference sometimes, but I, yeah, right. I just would like to, to explore this uh, in relation to the last film of Godard, where, uh, as, I don't know whether you have seen Adieu ou Langage, yes. where uh, Godard performs an extraordinary procedure that addressing the two eyes differently, yeah. so that one eye is uh, two different images are projected on both eyes, on each of the two eyes, uh, sometimes even moving in different directions. No, but I'm interested in that the effect of this procedure is distinction with the kind of uh, mixture of sounds that reach the ear in through modern music is a deconstitution of subjectivity, the normal sense, yes, because it's a deconstitution of the world as one. Of, yeah, okay, no. Because, uh, again, I mean, you have the bad subjectivity, first floor, and then you have Godard, second floor, new subjectivity. No. I'm not suggesting any uh, uh, priority or evaluation right. here. I'm saying that the eye, the fact that we have two eyes, allows a two, two okay. different right. procedure right. in relation to addressing right. the body, okay. the body's relation to the world, the body as being the, some kind of the starting point from the book which the world unfolds, etc. Right. The sound is not, the ear is not capable of such separation. <clears throat> um, well, I'm not, well, anyway, yeah, this could be a um, matter of a large, longer um, discussion. You are referring to something that I'm very interested in, and it is the stereoscopical effect. I'm very interested in it because Simondon uh, takes a huge importance, at least for me, in Simondon, in my Simondon reading, and it's the fact that we have two eyes. So we have this stereoscopic capacity, you know, uh, when uh, you know this. Uh, this parallel effect. Uh, every, every eye is bi-dimensional and then you can construct the three-dimensionality by uh, not combining but putting together these two different bi-dimensional uh, images. But then your argument that sound is not like this, I would say it's completely to my eye and ear, <laughs> completely um, untrue. Because of course you have a stereoscopic effect of earring. And then I would say, uh, and this is related with the musical um, 
research of today. Because sound is not a given intellectual or sensorial persona. It's not a personage that has its identity like a Balsacian bourgeois. Sound as uh, color has to be taken as organoleptic, that is, as a certain type of relation between a certain type of body-like organicity and a certain type of relations. For instance, regarding color, you have matter, you have light, and you have certain devices that are like eye. But for sound, you have exactly the same type of dispositive. So I, I would not distinguish between sound and, and, and eye in, in this, this matter of stereoscopic. Maybe you can argue that for Godard, image, visual image are more complicated than sound image. Maybe I could follow you. But then I would not say, I didn't catch your point. No, you cannot separate. Right. You cannot address the two is separate. Right. Whereas the good idea that we have addresses the two eyes differently. Well, why not? Well, I'm not saying why not. I'm saying that the, the deconstructive effect of yeah. this extraordinary notion that the two okay. eyes do not see the same image at once yeah. is so extraordinary that it, this experience cannot be replicated. Okay. Right. Yeah, but then maybe uh, it's difficult to be clear because uh, my other point is not to say that visual and ear is the same stuff. Exactly. Well, yeah, of course. Yeah, maybe to continue that, um, perhaps I'm, I really appreciate what you've said about um, art and this machinic analysis of it, this opening to arts and technique and technique. You alluded to that this would follow on what you said, the so-called natural body, but I'm just wondering um, of the place of embodiment and embodied arts in this machinic um, vision. Is it exactly the same? Um, uh, Arts meaning, uh, of course, song primarily in this context, but also movement and, and why I split those, some move actions of the body. I wonder if that is sort of demoted in its importance because of the uh, power of the technologies that you're discussing, or if it's just a continuum um, with the technologies it becomes the body is machinic in the same way, or the, the so-called natural body has some specialness or some difference from the, the technologies that you're referring to. No, I mean, it's difficult for us because our language and we were taught to, to, to think with these categories, body and technique, but this is completely out of the question because I do not distinguish body and technique at all. So I was obliged to, 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 to use this world in order for you to understand that I do not distinguish between art and uh, technique. But then I, I have possibilities to make my point and to say that I do prefer this piece of work and that, because it's not pure relativism, right? But then I do not distinguish whatsoever body and technique, I don't. And more, I do argue that if you do so, you are incapable to understand contemporary art and by extension, ancient art as well. Because my, my point was, I mean, Prehistorical art is completely technical, and of course. I mean, what type of music? I mean, what is this? How can you play the piano without a piano? I mean, realize this. And if it's true for music, it is obviously true for painting as well, for every type of art. Now, it, it has been comprehensive to Western sensibilities and Western uh, mentalities uh, since the invention of photography and cinema, which were some kind of scandal, because suddenly it appears that the artistic genius was not only a soul, a masculine soul, of course. Right? But then...
100 years later, we do have a knowledge, this not body, not technology, but this sensory motricity, this social sensory motricity. And this applies to Western art, and it applies to Aborigines art, but on a distinct, distinct level, because I wouldn't say that, and I'm referring to the beautiful analysis of Barbara Glosevsky, Aborigines art, when she says that people, when they discovered Australia, thought that the Aborigines guys in Australia, little and black, were like monkeys because they did not, did not master um, iron, which was the master, the most important piece of uh, technological um, condition of uh, industrial capitalism. But then Barbara Grosevsky argued that if Australia could have been discovered nowadays, which is of course impossible, but if they should have been discovered today, it is possible that with our use of internet, we would have been completely amazed by the capacities of these people to get in connection and to think together dancing, music, um, justice, land, mythology, properties, and to put them together in a way that is like, you know, internet without electricity. So this is a very, very, very good example to understand that one, on one hand, we cannot use a concept of art that is valuable for, that is... A, um, interesting for every type of culture, but on the other hand, we have to think of social, technical, aesthetical devices and we have to take them together. So sorry for being wrong. <laughs>